which CARICOM had raised in 2019, and which had been a major agenda item at CARICOM as a government meeting. So now we finally got where we want to be, which is to be heard by banks in front of the United States Congress. So I'm going up there for that. That delegation is being led by Prime Minister Motley, who is the co-chair on the finance side. But um, the CARICOM would have a very significant presence while this, these hearings go on. That's on Wednesday, and on Thursday there's the energy meeting, and I, go, I take that too, and then I'm back on the weekend. I stop off in New York to see my new grandchild. I hope that doesn't upset too many people, but wish me well. Thank you. Yes, you, you said there was something else you wanted to raise. If I may ask about the Labrador Shipyard space, um, will that be coming on stream, and where the project is, and also what is the financial outlook for these projects, and will it be an avenue of diversification? Okay, the Labre Jai Dock is still a matter in its infancy. We're doing uh, the feasibility work has gone on. It is still something that we want to do. The principals are still on board. But what gives it a much better chance now is the fact that if we do become a refueling port, as we are advancing very quickly to, it makes it far more feasible to operate dry docking facilities in Trinidad and Tobago. So um, we, we are confident now that somewhere along the way, the investment decision of the library dry dock is likely to be made, and in fact, with improved partnership. As it stands, initially it was Chi uh, Chinese interests and the government of Trinidad and Tobago. As we advance these thoughts that I've just raised with you, other interests are being shown because the government doesn't really want to be um, the main mover and driver in this. The more we get from the private sector and commitments from people with ships, the more feasible does dry docking in Trinidad and Tobago loom on the horizon as a major investment possibility. So we're still there, but not yet at the investment stage with numbers at this stage. Question now. I'm sure you've heard about the brewing issue in Tobago. Any comments on the duty and folly situation and are you concerned for the governance of the island Tobago. itself? Yes. No. <laughs> Why would I be concerned about other people's political agendas as long as they stay within the laws of Trinidad and Tobago? It's still a free country. But the second part of your question is yes. In the, to the extent that any of these developments negatively impact on the ability of public officers to discharge their duties, then the government has an interest in ensuring that we keep an eye on that. Just to go back to the, um, you know, negotiations that you have attended in Europe, just wanted to know for the sake of clarity, for the lay person, every person in the street, is there any, you know, short or long-term employment may be generated from these projects they may be able to look forward to? Well, let's put it this way. All of these investments will require people to carry them out. And I mentioned to you the commitment to have construction based in Trinidad and Tobago for any of the facilities that will arise once the investment are made. You know what that means. That means jobs, good quality jobs. Every platform we build here, every jacket we build, or the top side otherwise, these are opportunities. So while we don't speak specifically about a specific job, capital always needs labor to deliver on its promise. Okay? Thank you all very much. We oh, have one more question. Okay, she has one more question. New lady has one last question. We're also hearing that the Prime Minister of Barbados is going to the IMF. Is that a cause of concern for us? No. Um, Barbados has been in an IMF program. It's not that she's going to the IMF. Barbados is in an IMF program, and the program outlines pathways and milestones. And I think Barbados has done quite well in that first program, in meeting the milestone. There's no disaster in going to the IMF if you end up requiring IMF assistance. That is what the IMF is for. But when you go to the IMF to get the assistance, 
the IMF usually lays down some very stringent conditions. So if you want to avoid those conditions being applied to you, you tend to avoid the IMF. But once you are in the program, um, Jamaica is an IMF program. In Trinidad and Tobago's case, the government of Trinidad and Tobago took the position that we, even though we had similar difficulties, we will not use the IMF as our way out. We will make our own decisions and apply our own medicine so as to have the flexibility of doing it the way we would like to do it and not have the pain of IMF impositions upon us. That is what has happened in Trinidad and Tobago. You would have heard some of the experts telling us, well, if we didn't do that, what's going to happen to our foreign exchange? It's going to run out, and la, 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 la. That has not happened. And we have been making adjustments. Of course, when we do that, we are accused of all kinds of things. But the bottom line is that those have been national decisions made by us in the context of our own circumstances without being dictated to us by the IMF on their terms. And we have done that quite successfully. And I, I dare say we are well away from any access to the IMF as a lender of last resort. You mentioned some travels also. Is the Queen's funeral, any plans to go to the Queen's funeral or an envoy? For me, for me? Yeah. No, no. Um, our president will represent the country at the funeral. Arrangements are in place for the president of Trinidad and Tobago to attend the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. So that starts being handled by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the President's Office, and you will get more information in the very near future. One last question. Time, um, recently, the Chairman of the Commission of Inquiry into the deaths of the divers would have come in the public domain and made certain remarks over our uh, concerns, over our lack of resources, and so on. I don't know if you're aware of I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't pay attention to that at this press conference this morning. Those are administrative matters, which I'm sure there are enough people on the government payroll to ensure that that doesn't happen. Thank you very much.